All right, class. So in today's video, I'm just going to go over um, how to organize your, your template and to understand how to read what's going on here. And also how to take an image, because I said I wanted a connection between your background, middle ground, and foreground. So this video is going to go over how to take the image. Uh, like let's say I wanted this map of Italy right here to run through the background, the middle ground, and the foreground, and the base. How I can do that um, in Illustrator. All right, so you, you can do this in Photoshop as well. It's just a little bit different. You would be cutting, copying, pasting, deleting. Um, but same type of idea um, in Photoshop as it would be in Illustrator. So you can see here in my new template, I lined up the background, middle ground, and foreground next to each other so you can see how much space would roughly be between the background area, the middle ground area where it would line up with, and then the foreground area where that would line up with your middle ground. You can obviously change these lines. They're not permanent, but this is my template that I'm giving you to work off of, so you can work off of it. Um, and you can see that I also created um, or added in measurements. So the background is the 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 background is four and a quarter inches, uh, and so is the base. So if this was considered the base, right where we're going to glue our parts, uh, this is also four and a quarter inches. The middle ground is two and three quarter inches to where the fold would uh, would sit, all right, right on top of this line. And then same with your foreground. So you've got one and a quarter inches to the fold, which would sit on this line that I've created here for you. Uh, so you need to kind of rework this, this whole, re, uh, you know, create this, this whole image all together, that's kind of your, your challenge here. The first thing that you're going to want to do is if you have a picture that you want to connect from your background to your middle ground to your foreground and your base or just from one to another, um, <clears throat> you want to make sure that you watch this. Right, I'm going to lower the opacity of the picture and uh, work with it that way so I can kind of see through what's going on here. Another thing you want to be mindful of are your layers. So you can see that I opened up my template file and um, and I locked it so that you can't move any of these templates. I created a new layer, and in this new layer is where I'm going to lay out my map. All right, so remember, just like the character design, you want to keep all of your, your layers organized. I might create other layers for pictures, other layers for text, and, and so forth. Um, <clears throat> all right, so I'm going to make one. First, you want to make sure the picture fits within all of the space. So you want to make sure that the width is correct, it fits within that space, you want to make sure that the height is correct and that you have enough of a picture to fit within each of those connecting parts. So if I were to start my um, Italy map right at the top of the background, um, you're going to notice that where my fold comes uh, from the top of the background to the bottom, it's right smack in the middle of the word Umbria. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this over here and I'm just going to make sure that um, roughly where Umbria is, right, wherever it sits, would be at the top of the middle ground. And then <clears throat> I could see that, you know, it would end probably around Orstein or, what, or in Sardinia, right, that, that city um, on Sardinia, right? So then that city I want to make sure would be at the top of my foreground. And then the bottom, and I'm basing this on where the fold is because I have no information is going to go within this fold, would be a, just a little bit above Messina, right, in Sicily. Um, and these like little islands here. So those little islands would start um, like around here on my base, right? So you can see that the picture fits. You don't want to have a picture be too small and then it's not going to fit within all the spaces that you want to create that connection to and from. So now I'm going to go ahead and I need one, two, three, four different um, copies of this. So I'm going to do Command C or Control C and do four different copies and I'm going to keep them all off to the side. All right. Um, and now I'm going to work with my first one here. 
So there is measuring that you're going to have to do. And I'd say if you, if you do something like this, um, I would do it and then print it out um, to see how it aligns uh, every time that you do it to make sure that uh, it works, right? So how do you crop an image in, um, in Illustrator? So it's pretty easy. You're just going to mask it. So what I would do is kind of line it up where you want. So I'm going to line it up. Um, I want to get most of Italy in here. So I'm going to line it up like that. And I want to make, definitely want to make sure Corciano is in my picture because that's what I'm basing this off of. And um, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to crop just the left and the right side for now. Okay, so I'm going to hit mask up top. And that will allow me to pull in the picture and mask out parts that I don't want anymore, right? And I'm actually going to mask out all of this as well. But I just want to go in and look at this really quickly. So I want to make sure that when I do my next picture um, and I align it that, um, you know, Umbria is going to be in the middle ground. Um, so maybe I'll look at stuff that's going on in here. I'm going to say that half the M needs to be, in order for it to line, half of this M needs to be um, up against the middle ground template over here. Now you can, you can use your guidelines to help you measure certain things out, right? Or um, and technically measure like how far certain things are from one another to match it up to your middle ground and your foreground. Um, but you know, for the purpose of this, I'm kind of um, eyeballing it, right? Um, but you could be very technical with it if you'd like to. It's just going to make it a little bit harder for you. I'm just trying to show you the easiest approach which would be putting pinpoints on certain things, like the word Umbria is split in half. So I'm going to see half the word Umbria in my middle ground, and I'm going to see half of this M up against the side of this middle ground template as well. Um, so I'm going to just finish masking this right now. Just bring this in. What's going on here? Bring that back over. Pull this up all the way to, um, hey, what's going on here? Let me just backtrack here for a second. Um, okay, there we go. So I cropped my picture, the first one, right? So now I'm going to take my second picture. I'm going to bring it over. And remember I, I talked about how the word Umbria needs to be I'm going to use my arrows to center it. And then the um, – let's see here for a second. Adriatic Sea. So Umbria is going to be here. Okay. And then um, – This M, right, was supposed to be, that does not look right. Maybe this is double here. Um, I'm trying to base it off that M, but it's not lining up now. But the Adriatic Sea, if I were going to, let's see, pull out one of my guidelines, right, um, to where the U in Umbria sits, right, it's about um, one inch. It's about one and a half inches, right? So um, what I can do is then kind of measure that again. So I could say it's about one and a half. So that's where um, Umbria should sit. So I'm using this as a, a reference or a marker. It should be, let's see, a little bit more. All right. So now I know my picture that you, now so that makes more sense is going to be kind of cut in half. So hopefully when I print it out, Adriatic C is going to kind of line up correctly. So now when I zoom out and I go to mask it and crop it, right, 
I'm going to make sure that I pull this in, I pull this in, I pull this all the way down because all that's on the, the background part of this. And then I'm going to look back at it again. All right. And I'm going to say, okay, that looks pretty accurate with where it should be located. Um, so in my foreground, my foreground is going to start with the word C uh, right at the top of it, right? Um, or actually, I'm going to start with Tyranian because I want that to be, that's not going to be seen within that fold. So <clears throat> I'm going to start it up here. So I'm going to crop it around this area. And um, that same guideline that I created, I, I said that's about one and a half inches in or one three quarters. Um, it's right around the second R in the word Terranian. So I'm going to make sure that when I line up this picture in my foreground that I have it lined up with that R in the word Terranian, right? So now what I'm going to do is just take this and crop it right to there. Okay. And now I've got my second picture. Now I'm going to take my next one Okay, I'm going to place it over my foreground and I'm going to crop this one now too, but I just want to make sure that things are lined up. So I said that the top of this should be Tyranian, right? Should be around there. And um, if I were to measure, <clears throat> hold on, let's see. Miss Double's not doing her math correctly here. three quarters of an inch. Okay, that should be around where the R is in Tyranian. So that's what I said it should be like. So now I'm going to, I keep zooming in and out so it's kind of confusing me. Um, and now I'm going to take my mask tool and I'm going to bring it down. And that should line up correctly. You can use your guidelines for many things. Like, so for instance, um, I could use a guideline and pinpoint areas of the boot of Italy to match up with where it would match up at the end of your foreground, right? To make sure that matches up too. So now I just want to make sure this is going to be a part of the base. So Messina uh, in Sicily would be where my cutoff mark for, no, I'm sorry, I keep doing that, my fold, right? Don't forget about that. Um, so just a little bit above Messina, there's a little island. So I'm going to use that as my marker for where, um, where it would sit. So it would sit like right here on my next picture. And um, and then I'm going to use maybe like the boot of Italy as my marker to place where uh, the next picture would go. Okay, so I'm going to crop that. Okay, and that would be my third picture. Now I'm going to take the fourth one and bring it back here again. So I said, um, so you can see this is a little bit harder. This is a little bit more challenging. Uh, you know, you can see. Uh, I've started to question myself and make mistakes with certain things. Um, I can always go back and, and readjust and fix accordingly. Um, so that little island should be where it sits along this dotted line that I have for my foreground, right? And then the boot of Italy um, <clears throat> should come out about right there. So if we look at it, that should be where it connects to everything. So now I'm going to mask this. And I might actually just mask this whole thing. So this is like the whole base. So I could actually mask this whole thing so that you need you need to put something there anyway or I could just have it go 
all the way down to there and have other stuff happening in here. So it's up to you, but I'm gonna leave it like that. So I hope that makes sense. So what I'll do in class is show you, uh, I'll print this and I'll show you my, my copy of this and how hopefully when I go to uh, piece it together, it, it aligns pretty accurately, right? Um, in my, actually I'll show you in this video, so this way it's one, just one big long video that you can watch. <laughs> Um, let's say I wanted the word Corchiano. This is a little bit easier, actually. I think I actually put this in here by mistake. So I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to call this text. So let's say it was time for me to add text to this, um, piece. I have the word Corchiano, which is where I stayed. Um, so I'm going to lock the template and the map and work in my text box. All right. So I've got the word Corchiano. Let's say I wanted this word, Corciano, and I wrote it vertically because I wanted to pass through the background and the middle ground. First off, I'm gonna make it a little bit um, bolder. Um, and I might, you know, pick out a different font style. Um, I don't wanna waste time trying to figure out a font style for this. We're just gonna go with this one for now. Um, so I've got the word Corciano. So again, you want to use your, your guidelines for this too. Um, let's say I want a Corciano to, to fit through the background and then into this middle ground area. Uh, that's why it's good to have them right next to each other so you can kind of see what works. I'm going to use my guidelines. I'm going to pull down a guideline just to mark where the top of the middle ground is and how much roughly of the background you will see. So I'm going to figure that, split it up so that maybe the C-O-R-C -C are in the background and then the I-A-N-O are in the middle ground. So that's how you can easily kind of split it up. But I also want to use my guidelines, just kind of how I did with my picture, um, to roughly decide on how far in the word Corciano is going to go. So let's say um, this is about a quarter of an inch. Let's say I'm going to measure a quarter of an inch in and I'm going to line up Corciano um, with, with that quarter of an inch marker. So now what I'm going to do is take my guideline and I'm going to just measure a quarter of an inch in from the middle ground. And that's where I'm, I know I'm going to line it up on the middle ground area. And then if you were going to do that to your foreground, you would do the same. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the word um, Corciano course it's not letting me. I'm going to copy and paste it. All right, so I'm going to put that there. And I'm going to move it over here to that line, but I know that it's just going to be the I A N O. So, um then what I'm going to do is since I have them lined up, I'm just going to move my guideline for a second, and I'm going to use my type tool and I'm going to whoops. Um delete the I A N O. Right, and just keep the C O R C on my uh, background. And then on this one, I'm just going to move this over slightly, and I'm going to delete the C O R C and I'm going to keep the I A N O. Okay, let's just measure it again. I'm going to pull this down. I'm using my arrow tool to do this. Okay. And now I know that Corciano is aligned um, through the background and will, will be aligned into the um, middle ground as well. So that's how you can make connections between things from one to the next as well. And that doesn't just go for text. That could go for objects that you create and bring in as well and you crop them and so forth. And again, this is the same stuff you would do in Photoshop, just... Uh, a little bit different, but I thought I would share it with you in Illustrator. Um, <clears throat> so once you feel comfortable, you can kind of start getting yourself set up. Um, I am going to put together a tutorial of effects in Photoshop and Illustrator as reminders of tools that you can use um, besides some of the simple ones that maybe we know at this moment. So I hope you find this helpful. Sorry it's so long, but... 